Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven Rodriguez, I'm your true champion, and today I'm going to be teaching y'all how to play the Digimon 2020 TCG. This video will be a full comprehensive guide to the game's rules as well as the various mechanics within the game. Now if this is your first time by the channel, welcome, hello, I'm the true champion Steven, and I make all kinds of TCG related content here on the channel, and as of right now I plan on doing at least one Digimon TCG video every single week for the foreseeable future. So if you are like me and enjoy this game and you want to support the community, then please let me know that by leaving a like on this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking that bell for notifications so that way you guys know when my videos go live for you. Now before I get started, a quick little disclaimer here is that as of right now, there is no official English release for the Digimon 2020 TCG, nor any announcements for localization whatsoever. Despite this, however, there actually is an English version of the rulebook found on the official website of the Digimon TCG. This, plus the actual English version of the website, sort of implies that they have plans to localize the game, so I figured it was time for me to make an actual English version of the How to Play the Digimon TCG so that we guys can have a very good comprehensive set of rules, so if the game ever does get localized in the future, you can hit the ground running, as it were, and start playing as soon as possible. So with that in mind, here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to break everything down into three main parts. We're going to have the overall setup of the game. That'll include the deck building, uh, the different card types, stuff like that. The next bit will be like the main phases of the game, as well as the flow of play, um, how attacking works, battles, winning the game, losing the game, start of the game, all that fun stuff. And then at the very end, we're going to talk about the extra information or the extra mechanics that are sort of outside the main game's rules. So if you're someone who already understands the basic rules of the Digimon TCG, go ahead and jump to the very end of the video. I'll leave timestamps down below for each section. With all that in mind, I think it's time to get started with the actual setup and deck building for the Digimon TCG, but I think I'm missing one very important thing. This is a Digimon video. Let's get digital. Ah, much better. Now that we're in the right setting to talk about the Digimon TCG, let's start off with how to build a deck in the Digimon TCG. Now, deck building in the Digimon TCG is very simple. You have two main types of decks. You have the 50 card main deck that contains all your Digimon, option cards, and tamer cards. Separate from the main deck, you have the 0 to 5 card Digitama or Digi Egg deck. In here, you'll find examples of baby Digimon that only appear in the raising area. More on the raising area later on. An important factor here when it comes to talking about the main and Digi Egg decks is that you can only include four copies of any one card in your deck. And some people might think that this is that this refers to the individual name of that card. You would be wrong. It actually refers to the specific set number of the card instead. So I have these two Agumon on screen right now. I can have four copies of each of them. And the reason is because they have unique set numbers. So as long as the set numbers of the cards you're playing are different, you can have four copies maximum of each card. As of right now, there are six colors that you can build your deck with in the Digimon TCG, as well as a generic white color that only applies to certain level 7 Digimon. Those six colors are red, blue, yellow, green, black, and purple. Along with the six main types of colors, we also have the three main types of cards. Digimon cards, option cards, and tamer cards. Now, to get to the bulk of how to understand this, basically, Digimon cards have three main things about them that you can read on the cards. You have the cost slash evolution conditions of the cards, you have the types of effects, inheritable versus non-inheritable, and you have the DP of the cards. Everything else about the card is purely for aesthetics and just look nice. Now, I will touch on each aspect of Digimon cards throughout this video, but the main one that I want to kind of get into your brains now before I move forward is inheritable versus non-inheritable. Basically, these adjectives refer to the types of skills that Digimon can have. Inheritable skills are skills that Digimon have that do not apply to themselves, but do apply to any Digimon that evolve from them. For example, we have this Agumon from the starter deck that has the inheritable skill of giving a Digimon plus 1000 DP during your turn. This does not apply to the actual Agumon himself, but if I were to take a Greymon that was a level 4 Digimon and evolve it on top of this card, it now has the inheritable skill of plus 1000 DP during your turn, and it does apply to this Greymon. The other type of skill is of course non-inheritable, and this refers to any skill that that individual Digimon actually has, and it is located right underneath the actual main art of the card. Moving on of course, we have the option card. Now the key things about option cards that you want to know are they're basically the spell 
XL slash item cards of the Digimon TCG. They do not go in the battle area, they simply get played and then get put in the trash, so they're one time use. However, there are an unlimited amount of option cards you can play during your turn as long as you have the resources to do so. One special thing about option cards that makes them a little different and is kind of an interesting sort of limitation on them is that in order to actually use an option card, you must have at least one card in play that is the same color as that option card. So for example, I have Gaia Force here. I cannot use Gaia Force with its actual main effect skill unless I have a red card in my battle area. It could be a Digimon and I believe it can also be a Tamer card. This rule, however, does not apply to the other type of skills that option cards have, known as security skills. I'll talk more about what security skills are later on in this video, but just know that for now, option cards have two types of skills, main effect skills that only can be used as long as you have one card in play that is the same color as the option card, and security skills that are unrestricted in how they can be used. Finally, the last type of card within the Digimon TCG is what is known as a Tamer card. Basically, a Tamer card is a permanent option card that is played in the battle area. And unlike option cards, there is no limitation to when Tamer cards can be played. As long as you have the ability to pay for their costs, you can put them into play. Some fun things about them is that there's no limit to how many Tamer cards you can have in your battle area at any one time. Another fun thing is that you have multiple of the same Tamer card in play. The effects of that Tamer card do in fact stack. So I have this TK Takaishi here that says give 2000 power to your Digimon in the security area. If I have four in play, that gives them plus 8000 DP during that turn, which is just awesome. So these effects do stack and there is no limit to how many of them that can be in play. All right, now that we've gotten through the deck build slash setup of the game, let's talk a little bit more about the play area slash the game board. There are five main areas in the Digimon TCG. We have the deck area, which is where you put your deck. You have the trash or the discard pile. We have a battle area, which if you're familiar with any game by Bandai, pretty much, uh, DBS, Chrono Clash, etc. They love having battle areas as a great way to put all the cards you play. Digimon, Tamer cards, etc. This is where the bulk of interactions happen. We have the all-important and all-elusive nursery area, or if you're familiar with the Japanese version of the rules, the raising area. This is where your Digi-Egg deck goes, as well as any Digimon evolved from your Digi-Eggs throughout the game. And finally, we have the security area, which is where your essential life cards or security cards go at the beginning of the game. And this area plays a very important role in terms of checking security cards, as well as deciding a winner for the game. But more on that a bit later, of course. Now, before we move forward, I want to briefly talk about the nursery area or the raising area for some people, as there's a lot of rulings that go about in here. And it's really important that as we move forward, that you understand that the nursery area is a separate area that actually isn't a part of the overall play area or the battle area. This means that any Digimon here cannot attack nor use their skills, and they also cannot be targeted for attacks or any skills in general. Like I said, this area is essentially removed from the overall game area, and I think the reason for this is that level 2 Digimon, as you know, cannot be put in the battle area as they do not have any DP nor any actual effects of their own, so they are basically separated by the nursery area. Some interesting rules about the nursery area is that you can only have one Digimon in this area at a time, and even though you cannot affect this area with any skills or attacks, you can evolve Digimon in the nursery area with cards from your hand. Really quickly before I move forward, if you guys have been watching the video so far and gained any value from it, please be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications so that you guys know when my videos go live for you. Like I said earlier, I do plan on putting out at least one Digimon TCG related video every single week for the foreseeable future. If any of y'all have suggestions for videos that I could do, leave them down in the comments below. I would love to see them. Now that we understand the overall setup of the game, let's dig into the actual meat of this and talk about the phases of play. And let's begin, of course, with how to start the game. All right, let's talk about how to start the game. First things first, at the start of it, like any other game, you shuffle both your main deck and your Digitama slash Digi Egg deck, and then put them into their respective areas, the deck area, and of course the nursery area. 
After your decks have been shuffled, you take the top five cards from your main deck and put them into the security area face down. Once that is done, you do some sort of randomization with your opponent to figure out whose goes first. This could be rock, paper, scissors. This could be a dice roll. This could be a coin flip. Doesn't really matter as long as it's random. Once you decide who goes first, you and your opponent both draw an opening hand of five cards. At this point, it is important to note that there is no mulligan rule in this game. Thus, the five cards you get at the beginning of the game are the five cards you get for your first turn. Once all that is done, you place a counter on the memory gauge beginning at zero, and then the game begins. We'll talk more on how the memory gauge works in a bit, but just know from now that it is the main way that you and your opponent pay for the costs of your cards. Now that we've gone through the starting of the game, let's talk about the win conditions of the game. How do you actually achieve a victory in the Digimon TCG? Now, the two main win conditions in the Digimon TCG are as follows. There is attacking your opponent whilst they have no security cards. Simply putting your opponent to zero security cards isn't actually enough to win the game. You have to attack them one more time after that and sort of do a finish blow type thing to them. A fun way to think about it is kind of like the security cards act as security or shields and until you take out all the shields you cannot deal the final finishing blow. The last way to win, well it's actually not a way to win, it's more of a how to lose. Uh, basically if you have no cards to draw during your draw phase you lose the game. This is known in many games as a deck out rule. Unlike some games however this is not an instant deck out rule, this is a very specific phase deck out rule. Thus, if you have an effect during your main phase that says draw a card and you have no cards left to draw, you just whiff the effect. You don't actually lose the game. It has to be during your draw phase that you have zero cards to draw. Speaking of the phases, let's go through them. There are four main phases in the Digimon TCG. There is the active phase, the draw phase, the nursery or raising phase, and the main phase. Fun fact, the Digimon TCG is one of the very few games that actually doesn't have an end phase. In any scenario where your turn ends, that's it. It just ends and immediately becomes your opponent's active phase. Really cool. I'm not sure if this will stay. There might be effects that come out in the future that actually do interact during the end of turn. So thus there would need to be an end phase. But for now, just know turns just end. Now that I've talked about the phases, let's go through each one individually, starting with the active phase. Quite simply, during the active phase, all you do is turn all your Digimon slash Tamer cards that are in the rested or tapped position into the active position. Once that is done, you can now begin the rest of your turn. After the active phase comes the draw phase. As I kind of mentioned earlier, all you do during this phase is draw the top card of your deck and then add it to your hand. A note here that I didn't mention before is that the player who goes first does not actually draw a card during their draw phase if it is their first turn of the game. After the draw phase comes the nursery phase. Now, during the nursery phase, there are essentially three things you can do. You can hatch a Digi Egg, which basically means taking the top card of your Digi Egg deck and turning it face up. You can take a Digimon in the nursery area and put it into the battle area, or you can do nothing during this phase. So important rules here is that you are not allowed to move a level two Digimon or Digi Egg into the battle area. Like I said earlier, Digi Eggs or level two Digimon cannot exist in the battle area. They just can't. They don't have DP, they can't do anything. In order for a level two to move to the battle area, it must be evolved to at least level three in the nursery area first. Keep in mind as well that moving to the battle area does not count as playing a card. So any on play effects do not activate. Keep in mind as well that moving to the battle area does not count as playing a card. So any on play effects do not activate. This is a common thing that people get wrong when playing on tabletop or octagon and it really grinds my gears ladies and gentlemen it really does. And the last thing about the nursery area is anything done in the nursery phase can only be done once per turn. You can only play once, you can only move once, and you can only do nothing once. If you do any of those things, you can't do the rest. With that very complicated phase out the way, let's talk about the main phase. Now, as the name suggests, this is the main phase of your turn, where you can perform most of the actions that you can do in the Digimon TCG, given that you have the resources to do so. Now, as the name suggests, this is the main phase of your turn where you can perform the most actions. You can perform any of the following actions in any order you choose, if and only if you have the resources to do so. You can summon Digimon to the battle area, 
you can evolve Digimon either in the battle area or the nursery area. You can attack with your Digimon in the battle area, either attacking opponent's security or attacking other rested Digimon. You can play option cards and you can summon tamer cards to the battle area. Now that we are on the subject of actually using resources and playing cards, it seems fitting to discuss the memory gauge. Now, the memory gauge, here's basically how it works. Anytime you play a card, whether it's a Digimon, an option card, or a tamer card, there will be a cost associated with it. In order to pay the cost on the card, you have to move the memory gauge. For example, if I take this three cost Agumon card here and play it, I move the memory gauge three spots towards my opponent or the right. At this point, it is important to point out that if you move the memory gauge beyond zero, basically go negative with your costs, your turn will automatically end and it now becomes your opponent's turn and they get as much memory as is on the gauge after you paid whatever cost you paid. So if you have two memory and you pay a three cost Agumon put in the battle area, your opponent now begins their turn and they have one memory at the start of their turn. However, if you pass your turn and still have memory to spare, your opponent automatically gets three memory at the start of their turn. One final thing to note about the memory gauge, and this is a big one, is that the memory gauge has a hard cap of 10. What this means is that if it is your first turn, you cannot play any card that has cost over 10 as the gauge begins at zero and there is no extra memory on your side of the gauge to assist in the cost of your card. So if I have this 15 cost Omnimon in my hand and I'm at zero memory on the memory gauge, I cannot play it on my first turn because I need to have at least five energy on my side in order to actually summon this card raw. Now that we're on the subject of playing a card like Omnimon, let's talk about how to play Digimon to the board. There are two main ways you can summon Digimon to the battle area. One is just by playing the card in the battle area and then paying its summoning cost. The other way is by achieving the evolving conditions as listed on the card itself. For example, let's take my level three Agumon here. He is a three cost Digimon. That means if I wish to play him normally, I must place him in the battle area and then pay three memory. But I can also evolve Agumon and pay zero memory in order to evolve as long as I evolve on top of a red level two Digimon. If you wanna know what the evolving conditions of your card are, simply look for the colored circle that is generally underneath the main cost of your Digimon. It'll say what level to evolve into and then it'll say what the cost of memory actually is. Now. When Digimon are played, they are played in the active state, and if you wish to attack or block with them, you must turn them into the rest mode in order to do so. There is no limit to the number of Digimon that can be in your battle area at any one time, but Digimon cannot attack the turn they are played. You can, however, attack the turn you evolve a Digimon or move a Digimon from the nursery area into the battle area. Moving on, we have the evolving rules. As long as you meet the evolution requirements or conditions of the card, you can evolve any Digimon into any other Digimon up till level seven. Any Digimon, regardless of how many evolution bases it has, counts as one Digimon. And if that Digimon goes to the trash, any and all sources go to the trash along with it. A fun little evolution bonus you get when you evolve a Digimon is that you get to draw a card every time you do so. This is really helpful for digging through your deck and helps keep the flow of the game going. Very cool. Now that we're on the subject of evolving Digimon, I think it's time we discussed a little bit more about inheritable versus non-inheritable skills, because this is where they come into play. This Agumon that I have here from the starter deck that I've been showing you all video has the inheritable skill that says during your turn, this Digimon gets power plus 1000 DP. And this skill only applies to the Digimon that has evolved from this card and not to the card itself. That is what makes it an inheritable skill. This Agumon as a promo five cost Agumon has the on play non-inheritable skill effect to destroy a Digimon that has 3000 DP or less. This skill only applies to this Digimon and any Digimon that Digivolve from it do not inherit this skill. So really simply, if a Digimon has an evolution base that has an inheritable skill, it then inherits that skill and now has it itself. But if a Digimon has an evolution base that has a non-inheritable skill, it does not carry over into the next form it only affects the immediate base form. 
Now that I've talked about playing Digimon and the main phases of play, let's talk about battling. There are two main types of battles that happen. There are battles with security cards and battles with opposing Digimon. Let's start off with talking about security battles and how they work. First things first, let's talk about security cards. I've mentioned them a lot in this video, but I haven't really delved into what makes them special. Basically, security cards are cards that are put face down at the beginning of the game in your security area, and what happens is when they're attacked, you flip one of them face up, and if it is an option or tamer card, you can resolve the security skill of that card. If we take this Yamato from the starter deck as an example, it has a security skill of getting to be played without paying its summon cost. This skill can only be used if it is checked as a security. Same goes for any option cards that have security skills as well. An important thing to note here is that while it was true that for option cards to be played you need to have the same color of card in your battle area beforehand, this does not carry over for your security skills. If you just simply check this card as a security skill, you can activate that skill no matter what cards you have in your battle area. So let's say I check this Gaia Force card as a security and I do not have any red cards in my battle area, I can still use the effect. And the effect is use this card's main effect. So essentially I get to use this card not only for free, but without the restriction of needing to have a red card in my deck. This sort of interaction kind of leads to really interesting deck building that I've seen throughout the Japanese playing the game. So just keep this in mind that you can have cards in your deck and still get value from them even if you have no other colors of that card in your deck uh, because security skills are a thing. Continuing to talk about security cards, if a Digimon is flipped face up, then what actually ensues I think is what's known as a security battle. I don't think it's actually called anything, but I'm going to call it a security battle where basically you compare the DP of the two Digimon and if the Digimon that is checked as a security has higher DP than the attacker, the security Digimon deletes the attacker. As an example, if my Gabumon here attacks the security and reveals a Garurumon, that Garurumon has more DP than Gabumon, and thus both cards are now sent to their respective trash piles. Note that despite the security Digimon having higher DP than the attacker, the security still gets destroyed and sent to the trash. No matter what happens, if a security is attacked, it is sent to the trash after performing the security check. That's that. Also, no skills of that security Digimon can activate if they are checked as security, as Digimon do not have security skills. One final thing that I want to point out is that if you have multiple security checks, like security check plus one or security check plus two, like some cards do have, they only happen one at a time. So if the Digimon that is attacking gets destroyed before all the checks are done, what would follow is that the other checks just don't happen. So if I have a Digimon that has security plus two and I attack, a security and the first security reveals a stronger Digimon, I get deleted and the rest of the checks just don't happen. More on this towards the end of the video, but I figured I'd discuss it now because it is a very important interaction that you should have in your mind when thinking about adding cards that have extra security into your deck. Moving on to Digimon battles that happen in the actual battle area. For starters, like I mentioned earlier, you can only attack rest mode Digimon with other Digimon. This is why it is nice that we have summoning sickness in active mode, so that way you can play a card and as long as there aren't any effects that delete it, more or less, it is safe until your next turn. Very similar to what we saw with the security attacks, when a battle between two Digimon occurs, all you do is you compare the two Digimon's DP values and the lowest one in that battle gets destroyed slash deleted. An example of how this works is if my Gabumon here that has 2000 DP attacks my Garurumon here that has 4000 DP, my Gabumon dies and Garurumon is fine. That's not good. But if my Garurumon attacks my Gabumon, he has more DP, therefore Gabumon dies and I'm very happy because I got rid of one of my opponent's Digimon. A cool interaction that happens in this game is that if a tie of DP occurs, then both Digimon get destroyed. Example, Gabumon v Agumon. 2000 power to 2000 power, they both die. This is a really cool mechanic and I like this because you can essentially suicide your Digimon and if you don't care about your Digimon and your opponent's Digimon is really important or they're going to use it to evolve into a scary Digimon next turn, it's very important to get rid of that thing now before it can cause much trouble for you in the future. An important thing to mention while we are discussing DP is that if a Digimon's DP drops to zero, then it automatically gets deleted and sent to the trash. This is important to mention because there are cards in this game that lower DP and it's sort of like an extra 
form of removal in this game besides attacking Digimon or just like having cards like Gaia Force that blatantly just destroy Digimon. Well everyone, that does it for all the main interactions and phases of the Digimon TCG. Let's move on to talking about some of the extra keywords and mechanics that exist outside the main ones I've already discussed. The first one, and personally one of my favorites, is known as Blocker. This effect can be used against an attack from an opposing Digimon, and the way you would use it is you would activate a Digimon that has Blocker by simply resting it, similar to how you would attack with it. Once you do so, the target of the attack changes from the Digimon that was originally targeted to the Digimon that used its Blocker ability. The next two mechanics are known as Security Attack Plus and Security Attack Minus X. Basically, the way these work is you increase or decrease the number of security checks given by X when attacking the opposing player. Like I've already said, when you attack using multiple security checks due to this effect, you do not flip all security cards over at once. Instead, you flip over one at a time and do not move on to the next one until the first check is completed. If the attacking Digimon is deleted in battle or returned to the player's hand, the attack ends at that point and no other security checks follow. I do want to mention that also if you reduce a security attack to zero, even if the opponent has no more remaining security cards, you will not be able to win the game by attacking the opposing player. A Digimon must have some form of security damage in order to actually have a threatening attack against the opponent. The next mechanic kind of goes hand in hand with this. Uh, it's called Recovery Plus X. This effect basically allows you to draw X cards on the top of your deck and place them on top of your security pile without looking at them. With this effect, you can replenish your security pile and essentially increase the amount of lives you have before taking lethal damage. There is no limit to how many cards can be in your security pile, so it's a really important thing. If you go from 5 to 10 because of recovery effects, you just can. A really cool card to use for recovery is the uh, Magna Angemon from the first set, New Evolution. The next mechanic is a very popular one amongst red decks, and it's called Pierce. This effect allows a Digimon to check an opponent's security after a battle if the opposing Digimon was deleted in that battle. So basically, if you destroy an opponent's Digimon, you then also perform a security check. So not only are you clearing your opponent's board, but you're also dealing them more and more damage to eventually get them in, in lethal range. I will mention this effect also works if the attack is blocked. However, it does not activate for battles with security Digimon. So if you attack your opponent's security with a, with a Digimon that has Pierce and you reveal a Digimon that is lower power than your uh, attacking Digimon, it does not do another security check, it just puts that security in the trash and that's it. The next mechanic is called Draw X. This effect allows you to add X number of cards to your hand from your deck. The reason why I mentioned this uh, very simple mechanic is because I wanted to just kind of use it as a segue to talk about how there is no hand limit in the Digimon TCG, as that's a very important thing for certain blue decks as they just kind of like hoard certain cards in their hand and sort of control their opponent with all the cards they have access to throughout the game. The next mechanic, personally one of my favorites, is called jamming. The way it works is that a Digimon that has this effect will not be deleted if they lose a battle with the opponent's security Digimon. So basically if you attack with a card that has jamming and you have less DP than your opponent's security Digimon that is checked after you attack their security, you don't die. Furthermore, if you have security plus X effects, any additional checks will always happen. So I really like jamming because if you add extra effects like the Tai Chi from Booster Set 1 New Evolution on top of your jamming cards, you basically get extra guaranteed security checks throughout the game. A really nice addition uh, to the red deck. Moving forward, we have four new keywords that were released in the new Booster Set 2 Ultimate Power. Uh, they go as follows. You have Reactivate, Vengeance, Download, and D Digivolve. Let's go through them one at a time. Reactivate basically says that if a Digimon has this ability, at the end of your turn you make it active if it is rest. This is really cool because you can essentially attack with this Digimon, destroy an opponent's Digimon or security, and then at the end of your turn make it active again, thus protecting it from your opponent attacking them on their turn. An example of how this can be actually kind of broken is on the Black War Greymon level 6 from Ultimate Power. He has both Reactivate and and blocker, which basically means that he can attack with his 11k body and then at the end of turn restand and then block your opponent's attacks and then try and attack you. So you have like this really cool like sword and shield combination with this card that I really do like and that's why this mechanic is really cool. The next one is called D Digivolve. This is another black specific mechanic so far and the way it works is very simple. You essentially remove the top cards of Digimon evolution stacks. So 
If an opponent's Digimon is a level 6 and you de digivolve 2 using Machine Digimon, you remove the level 6 and the level 5 and put them into the trash, and now your opponent is left with a level 4 Digimon. The next two mechanics are kind of complicated, but hopefully I can make them make sense. Uh, you have Download, which so far only exists on certain green cards within Ultimate Power. And the way that they work is you essentially can reduce the evolution conditions of certain cards by resting other cards in your battle area. So let's take this Argomon for example. He has download minus three, which means if I rest one of my green Digimon in my battle area, I can reduce the evolution cost of this card in my hand by three, essentially playing it for free. This is really good at not only managing resources, but also getting really powerful Digimon into play a lot faster. And finally, the last extra mechanic that I wanted to talk about was known as Vengeance. This is a really cool mechanic so far exclusively only for purple Digimon. The way it works is if this Digimon is destroyed by your opponent's Digimon in battle, you destroy the attacking Digimon as well. It's a really cool way just to kind of like take your opponent with you if they try and get rid of, of your really powerful Digimon or your Digimon that you're trying to set up for late game pushes. I really like this mechanic and I think it makes purple quite the deck to play moving forward. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is everything you need to know to start playing the Digimon TCG today. If you have any questions that I did not answer in this video, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below, or better yet, use the English version of the rulebook that I left for you guys down in the description as a way to sort of supplement any information that I gave you in this video. Any of y'all want to chat some more about the game, I do go live over on Twitch every single Monday, Thursday, and Friday, and I do plan on doing some tabletop simulator testing of the game with my buddies every now and then, so come ask some questions and let's talk about this amazing game that I know we all love. Thanks again so much for watching everyone, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications. Hopefully this sort of sparked a love of the game for you, and now you're gonna go down into like a rabbit hole of content about the the game, looking up new cards, looking up other people's channels, and doing just a whole amazing binge. Let me know down in the comments if you do do it. I would love to know if you guys did that because of my video. But with all that being said, you guys, as always, I've been your true champion, Steven. Please be sure to work hard, rest easy, and live well, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.